Good morning. What if, instead of a scary thought, a cancer diagnosis could actually be the axis to renewed health? What if there was a non-invasive, pain-free, radiation-free, cost-effective way to detect cancer earlier than any current testing? Wouldn't that be a game changer, especially considering that one in two men and one in three women are affected by cancer today? So it is a week before Thanksgiving 2012, and I've just delivered my first TEDx talk. And Adriana here has donated her brilliant services as a director of photography for that event. And shortly after my TEDx is published, she sends me a Facebook message that says, I know you love dogs, and you have such an amazing group of friends and network of people that I was hoping you could help me get the word out about a documentary I'm trying to fund. I met this woman, and she trains dogs to detect cancer in humans. It is amazing and could change the way we detect cancer because these dogs can find cancer earlier and with greater accuracy than any medical testing. If you've ever been touched by someone diagnosed with cancer, yeah. then you understand how important it is to find it as early as possible. And what she doesn't know at the time is that I had just recently lost my best girlfriend to cancer due to a late diagnosis. So when I watch her Indiegogo link, I realize this is groundbreaking. I mean, what if my girlfriend had been screened by one of the dogs? Would she still be alive? So I tell her I will come in and match the highest donation level that she can fund. And that's how I came on board as the executive producer for Sniffing Out Cancer, a groundbreaking documentary on early cancer detection. And since 2013, while I've stayed focused on raising funds and awareness, Adriana here has shot over 60 interviews to date, and most of the time doing all the camera, audio, lighting, producing, directing, all on her own. Do you want to tell us your why for doing this? Absolutely. Um, in 2013, I was turning 30. Do you remember days or months leading up to your 30th birthday? <laughs> Any life event for that matter, graduation, first day at a dream job. Um, I do, because my anxiety and excitement could get the best of me. Um, particularly leading up to my 30th, I was digging deep into what my mortality meant. Um, I was no stranger to loss, but I had recently experienced three of my best girlfriends losing their fathers to cancer. And that really felt terrifying. Um, I had been out in Los Angeles for about 10 years, working in the film and television industry, and I constantly felt this pull to do something that educates people, that empowers women, and all beings for that matter, humans and animals too. Um, so a dear friend and mm -hmm. amazing therapist, Maggie Siltiel, knew this about me, and she told me about Dina Zafiris, a woman who trains dogs to find cancer in humans. Wait, dogs finding cancer? <laughs> wow, I have to meet her. So, like most of the people I've met along this filming of this documentary, I find her on the internet, cold call her, and get a meeting. Dina, with an open heart, allows me and my camera onto her ranch. At this time, it's just outside of Los Angeles and the first location of her Insight 2 Foundation. And this ranch has horses and goats and baby goats and so many dogs. I fall in love with it all. There, I see one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in my life. Two Australian shepherds, Stewie and Katie, do a demo showing me how they alert, they detect and alert on cancer samples. These trained dogs are alerting on biopsy confirmed breath samples provided by a hospital from humans with breast cancer. And they do it over and over and over again. These dogs don't get any sort of pep talks or clues from Dina. She just gives them a single command, go find, and they do, <laughs> they find. I am not a doctor. I am a humankind, animal-loving filmmaker, but seeing is believing, and all the research that I'm reading is holding up a pretty firm argument that these dogs can alert and find something in these cancer samples. So, what if you met, uh, you found out about the, what if you found out about this incredible discovery and these passionate people with research to prove it? What if you felt it was your responsibility to create awareness about? What if you didn't want to just share it with your friends, you wanted to share it with the world to create common knowledge? 
That is what I set out to do. Here, let us show you what we've been talking about so you can see it for yourselves. Mia came running into the house and she jumped up on my lap and she dove into my right breast with a lot of force. I was a little upset with her at the time and I pushed her off and rubbed it with my hand and I just felt something I'd never felt before. And my husband was standing there at the time and I said immediately, I said I must have cancer. I don't know why I thought that. It was just something I'd never felt before. We use instruments in our laboratory that we think are very sensitive. A dog's nose may be a thousand, a million times more sensitive. I mean, there's, there's tremendous evidence to suggest that a dog has an incredible nose. The cancer cells give off waste products. And the theory that we're testing is whether those compounds actually have an odor that would be transmitted through a person's breath, through perspiration, through saliva, through the urine. In 2015, it's estimated that over one and a half million people were diagnosed with cancer. We are at a place where we need to spread the word about this. I am here to tell you we have a way to detect cancer early. We have a screening method for cancer. It is not being used. Because one out of three individuals will be affected by cancer in their lifetime. There's a huge difference between finding that cancer early, because almost all cancers are curable if we find them early enough. Any tool that increases early detection is amazingly valuable. That dogs have such an ability to use their noses, why couldn't they use them for other things like the medical detection? And there have been some really good studies showing that dogs are capable of this and help to understand what it was that the dogs were smelling. It has been proven that dogs can detect cancer earlier and with greater accuracy than any medical technology, which is an incredible thought. And the fact that we're not using it um, kind of baffles me. Firefighters are at the highest risk for cancer, and they are actually using dogs to pre-screen their cancers. And when I walked in one day, he said, hey, Chief, would you like to try this cancer mask? I didn't know what it was. Took a look at it, I said, sure. So I did it, thinking nothing of it, put it in our envelope, and they sent it away. Three months later, I get a hit on my email saying, you know, something from the cancer dogs. So I was a little curious. I opened it up, and they said, your test came up positive. I just about fell off my chair. First, when I went to my doctor and I told him what happened, he never heard of the cancer dogs. He was curious, but he did his findings and everything, and uh, he said, yeah, I'm, you're curable. It made me go to the doctor early. I got it for each of my other three firehouses. I, I made them all do the mask. If it alerts you, you know, it's a lifesaver. We have them breathe under surgical mask for five minutes. The mask will get sent to our central laboratory. We'll have a team of hounds that actually have been repurposed and, and saved from euthanasia and they will be our, our first line sniffers. We can identify firefighters from low risk to high risk, and then those at high risk, we can actually bring a dog out that would screen them in person in real time and determine where on the body a disease is, is becoming active. And they can hit on about 200 or more different health conditions, cancers, uh, inflammatory diseases. There's no reason that we shouldn't be able to have this accessible for all people. And I think the dog's nose holds the key to early detection of all kinds of diseases and conditions. By the end of training, I have no clue where that cancer is, and the dog is the one saying yes or no. We have nine dogs that can do it with 99 or 98 percent accuracy. We're kind of stuck because it's not recognized as a detection method, as a screening method. We could actually supply the first screening method for several types of cancer. This will never work if I do this on my own. This will only work if all of the doctors get on board. But there will always be open people, there will be open doctors, there will be open dog trainers. And it's about finding the people that want to find the next thing. Sono stato guardato come un pazzo visionario per anni e adesso in tutto il mondo ci chiedono collaborazioni per attivare esperienze simili. For each mammogram that you have, you increase your risk of getting breast cancer by one to two percent from the amount of ionizing radiation. If we had tests where dogs could smell something at early, early stages, even this equipment, as great as it is, is only FDA approved to find a lesion at five millimeters. It's still been growing for a couple of years. So I think the dogs are really early detection. 
To be able to find a way to get people to get themselves checked without exposing themselves to negative consequences of, say, radiation or, you know, even financially. I mean, why wouldn't you do it? I would. We have to do a better job of listening to our patients who come in and say, you know, I don't feel right. Something's different. When they say, my dog says there's something different, I don't know that it's my place to say, really? I'm looking for every clue I can to say, something's not right here, and we'll get to the bottom of it. It's believed that dogs actually helped humans survive. So since survival is part of health, then dogs and humans really have a long track record in working together. Nothing but impressed with Dina's methods. Um, and, and the care, that she, the, the thought that's gone into this. This is, again, this is not something she's dabbling in. This is something that she's doing very seriously. And that, that to me, makes all the difference in the world. It makes, it makes me want to collaborate with her. My mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. My mom said to me in 2010, right before she died, you're going to do this for me with the dogs. And I promised her. Dogs detecting cancer, if that comes to fruition, I mean, it's groundbreaking and life-saving. We need more research. We need people to know about it, to talk about it, to demand it. And we need to be open to whatever it is that is going to be accessible and effective. If your dog's acting strange, coming to you, licking you like you never did before, have it checked out now. Don't wait. You know, the dog's smarter than we are. You know, he's trying to tell you something. My dog Fargo detected my cancer three months before I was actually diagnosed. These dogs definitely saved my life. This should be mandatory across not only the United States, but everywhere. I've had cancer three times. A second time uh, that I had cancer, when Wyatt and my others found it, I would have been dead. We know they can do it. I want to see studies published. I want to see screenings available for the public. And I want to detect this disease early. I want to save people. I've interviewed about 50 people in the past three years, and what I've learned from these people is so important that I really, really need to share it with others. Now the next step is really telling a story. From, from what you've just seen, You see why I had to get on board to support this documentary. This is working, and this, is, this needs to be out there in the real world. Um, but how do we get it out to the public? After I met Dina, and Pina here actually introduced her to some incredible lawyers, so she started working on documenting her training protocol, I continued with the documentary and my research. I wanted to learn everything I could and meet everyone I could that had to do with this subject. Um, and I kept wondering, if these dogs are proving they can do it, then why not use them? Why not have dogs screening the public for cancer today? Luckily, my dream of dogs detecting cancer becoming common knowledge is slowly but surely coming true. An internet search today will bring up multiple news stories and articles. Sniffing Out Cancer is the first U.S. documentary dedicated entirely to this subject. We need more doctors aware of this, and we need more trainers and dogs. I have and will continue to do what I can to get this out to the public. It's people like the trainers, mm -hmm. the Janice Wolf with Canine Professionals, United Canine Professionals, and helping the firefighters, Dr. Cindy Otto at Penn Vet Working Dog Center, Dr. Claire Guest, the foremost expert in the UK, and of course, Dina Zafiris, who has started the first training program for dog cancer detection dog trainers. These women are like heroes to me. Um, the possibilities are just ahead of us, and we are catching up to them quickly. And we wish to thank our fiscal sponsors and people like Whole Foods and Sweetwater and the New Hollywood, everyone who has donated along the way. Because like Adriana just said, we need more dog trainers out there and more dogs sniffing out cancer. We're just two Italian girls who are passionate about bringing awareness to a proven effective way to detect cancer early. And we're thrilled, honored to share it on 
this world stage because the sooner more people know about these dogs, the sooner the cancer detection dogs can start saving our loved ones from a late diagnosis. We're here because we have lost loved one to cancer, but this is not about us or our loved ones. This is about you and the possibilities for your loved ones. So our request is very simple. Please share this TEDx with at least three people who have lost a loved one to cancer and ask them to do the same. People often mention the fight against cancer. We believe that these trainers and dogs should be on the front lines of that fight. Thank you.